Welcome back to the Mind Crack server. Speech describing my next prank, so to speak, or uh, little snippets of text and um, audio clips may be hidden in my videos. They may not. <laughs> You'll never know until the prank has actually uh, been carried out. I know people are uh, speculating in comments and on Reddit as to what my next prank may be. You're just going to have to wait. Speculate away. <laughs> people seem to like to speculate, so that's fun. Uh, anyway, today's episode, we are going to do a couple things, at least that I have planned out. We may do some random stuff that strikes my fancy. Uh, main thing I want to do is clear out um, a lot of this sandstone so that we can start preparing uh, at least the center of the village and get to work on that. I really want to get to work on that project. I'm excited to actually uh, get, get it going because I have a lot of cool plans for it that I hope work out, but we got to clear a lot out of here uh, to get to that point. So we're going to do that first. Um, also a little later, completely unrelated to Minecraft. Uh, let's see, I don't need all these picks right now. I want to come up here and look at my boxes real quick. Um, people have been asking me on Twitter and in comments here or there, they've been asking um, for I guess like a basic tutorial for making coffee. It's come up several times in videos that uh, I, I'm quite the uh, coffee fiend. Okay, this is what I was curious about. I only have a fortune two pick in here. I thought I might have another one of these, but I don't. Uh, okay, let's see what's in the rest of these. Um, so yeah, people on Twitter and in other places have been asking me for like a basic rundown of uh, what you need to get started. Oop, wrong button. What you need to get started making good coffee. And so I'm gonna give like a basic tutorial, tell you um, the cheap equipment you want to get started, so you don't invest a bunch of a ton of money in it. One person asked me. Um, uh, I think they specifically said. Uh, they wanted to uh, try it out to making better coffee, but they didn't want to invest a bunch of money into something they weren't sure if they were going to like anyway. Um, so I'm going to give you like the cheap starter guide a little bit later in this video. Uh, but first, we're going to do some sandstone excavation, and a little later, I think, hopefully, we'll get to do a little trading. See how many how many emeralds I can accrue just today. And depending on what we get done, um, I'm not sure, we'll see, but depending on how long this takes, I would also like to um, uh, start setting up at least the the blueprint or the, the basic layout of, of the village, the future wasteland village. We'll see. We'll see what we get done. Alright, there we go, and as you can see, that is easily the largest uh, piece of land that I cleared in one sitting, or rather two sittings, one for sand and the second sitting for the sandstone, but I've almost doubled the amount of area we've cleared out, and I can start to actually work on the, um, the village now, and uh, what you're listening to right now is actually one of the rare instances of me doing post-commentary. I almost always do live commentary. Uh, I recorded, <laughs> when I recorded all this, I recorded the coffee tutorial and I tried to be concise, but I rambled for 45 or 50 minutes. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating, I really rambled about the beginner's guide to coffee for 45 minutes. So uh, I, I just couldn't concentrate on two things at once, so I'm going to record this in post and um, try to do this quickly. I'm going to start spreading dirt here at some point. 
and I'll explain after we talk about the coffee. I'm going to start talking about the village, and that will be uh, live commentary again. So anyway, um, beginner's guide to making good coffee. Um, the equipment you need, you're going to need filtered water. The quality of the water you use will influence the flavor of the coffee. So filtered water or uh, uh, spring water, you're going to need something to boil it in. A uh, plastic water kettle you can buy at a uh, appliance store like Target or Walmart or whatever equivalent you have in your area um, for anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. You don't need to spend a lot of money on that. Alternatively, if you have a teapot, teapots work fine. They're designed to boil water, so why wouldn't you use that? Um, also, a good thing to have is a thermometer. That's not 100% necessary at first, but it it will become vital if you want to really get the most out of your coffee. So a thermometer to measure the temperature of the water. Um, then you're going to need coffee beans. And I recommend you get light roast single estate origin coffee. And I, my personal preference is for South America and Central America. Um, probably more specifically Guatemala and Honduras always seem to have outstanding coffee that I just really like and I will recommend a few websites to get uh, coffee beans from. One is intelligentsia.com. The ones on Intelligentsia's site right now that I might recommend would be uh, It's Omna. Probably would be the best one of the ones on there that I've seen that they're offering right now in the single estates. Uh, another website you can go to is tobysestate.com and I'm gonna put links in the description for all this stuff I'm talking about uh, or examples of it. Uh, tobysestate.com um, is another good roaster and on their site they've got uh, El Tambor is a real good coffee. So why single estate, why light roast? Um, as a brief analogy, imagine your paint, you've got like a bunch of paint, right? You've got yellow, blue, purple, red, green, orange, whatever, a bunch of colors. Um, you can make a paint with all these different colors. What happens with paint if you like stir it up and mix up all the paint? You end up with this muddy, brown, ugly color that just looks ugh. Um, the same thing happens if you blend coffee beans from different areas. All the different flavors get mixed up and you end up with this sort of mediocre kind of bland coffee. Um, so in, in order to get all those, the, the good flavors, you need to uh, try and focus on a single estate origin coffee. Um, similar thing goes for the roast. The, the darker the roast on the coffee bean, in my opinion, uh, the more the sort of dark charred flavor of coffee starts to dominate the flavor profile and when you get uh, coffee beans that are lightly roasted you have a lot more different colors they haven't been all mashed up into that muddy brown so single estate light roast uh, alternatively if you don't want to get them from that website I would recommend looking around your area for a coffee shop um, not a chain nothing like Starbucks or coffee bean or anything like that but a locally owned coffee shop where people care about making good coffee You'll probably find Intelligentsia or Toby's Estate or something similar in their coffee shop that you can either get them to brew for you so you can try it out uh, without investing money into um, the coffee or the equipment. And then you're going to need something to uh, grind your beans. So we're going to specify a burr grinder, not a blade grinder. And the reason is uh, when you use a blade grinder, you've got this little chamber with a spinning blade whirring around and um, it's very random which parts of the beans get hit by the blade and which don't so you end up with some big big pieces some real little tiny pieces and what happens is the real tiny pieces either clog up the uh, filter or in the case of French press which is what you're gonna be making they'll actually go through the filter and you'll end up with muddy thick coffee because uh, your coffee grinds are too thin to be stopped by the filter what happens with a burr grinder is you've got two cylinders, you've got an outer cylinder and an inner cylinder, and the coffee is ground between them, and um, the setting you set is the distance between the cylinders so that only the pieces that get ground small enough will fall down to the bottom. So it's a much more specific grind. It also doesn't heat up the beans and like uh, cook the oil out of them before you even brew your coffee. Um, another thing to, to uh, keep in mind is to try and get your uh, coffee beans as fresh as possible um, and to only grind them right before you brew your coffee because there are oils in the beans which account for most of the flavor in your coffee and over time after you grind them all those oils 
they uh, they dry up and um, all the all that flavor gets lost to the air basically. And similarly, for the similar reason, you don't want to refrigerate your coffee beans because that's going to uh, that's going to affect the oils. It's going to make the oils dry up and disappear sooner. The last thing you need is a French press coffee maker. Um, they tend to come in either either uh, three cup or eight cup. Uh, sizes eight cups for people using metric in Europe and elsewhere eight cups is about a liter so I guess three cups would be 0.375 liters if I'm doing the math right off the top of my head uh, three eighths should be 0.375 um, three cup or eight cup uh, that's up to you how much coffee you want to make I personally use a, a liter one but either one works um, you don't really need to spend more than 20 or 30 bucks on a French press unless you want to and the only really thing you're buying when you spend more on it is for it to look nicer. They're all basically the same. Um, they just use a metal filter, so they're very easy to make. It's not like advanced technology or anything. There's a couple of price points for bird grinders. Uh, the first one is 50 bucks. You can get a hand crank bird grinder. I'll put a link in the description for that. That's what I started out with for bird grinders. And um, if you're doing a French press roast, which is fairly coarse, you can get through the grinds pretty quickly, but it's still kind of a hassle to crank away at that thing and wear out your arm. Um, but it's doable. The next price point is about a hundred bucks. You can get uh, a decent coffee burr grinder, um, which is what I still use. I have a Capresso Infinity burr grinder, which is not the by any means the best burr grinder out there, but it it works. It's moderate quality. And then the next price point is like at $300 all the way up to like multiple thousands of dollars for burr grinders. And for the really expensive ones, they're mostly for espresso, for like a really specific grind. You don't need a really expensive burr grinder to make drip coffee, although it, I, it helps. All right, now that you've got all that stuff, what do you do with it? You're going to want to, first things first, measure out the amount of coffee you need for your French press and the usual ratio of coffee to water is two tablespoons of coffee per one cup of water. So if you're using the one liter French press, you're gonna want ideally exactly 16 tablespoons of coffee. But if you're measuring before you grind, it's gonna be hard to get an exact measurement. So um, I actually measured mine out and I use about 12 spoonfuls. Um, but what I do that I like to do is I've got this glass measuring cup that um, I, I measure out the amount of coffee I want in, in and then I put a piece of masking tape or a post-it note or something at the level that I filled it up. And so if I determine that that's too much or too little, I can adjust my little mark and I don't have to be uh, like keep all these figures in my head all the time. I just fill things up to the mark. Similarly, on my grinder, I have a little post-it note with a, with a little arrow drawn on it that shows where the French press grind setting is so that I don't have to always, you know, be so scientific about it. I just, it's all on autopilot. In order to adjust the flavor of coffee, you're going to need to adjust, I guess, three settings. The first one is the grind of your coffee. So if your coffee, when you brew it, is really soupy or thick, then your grind is too fine and the and the pieces of grind are coming through the filter and making your coffee muddy. Uh, so you're going to need to make it coarser. However, if your coffee is too watery, then your grind is too coarse and it, you're not extracting enough flavor, you're going to have to make it a little bit finer. So this is something you need to play with uh, probably over the first couple weeks of making coffee until you get the right setting where your coffee doesn't taste thick and soupy but it still tastes uh, nice and full and flavorful. The second thing you need to adjust is the amount of coffee you use. You can use that baseline measurement of two spoonfuls per uh, cup of water as your baseline and then similarly if, um, if, you're, if your coffee tastes really strong and thick, use less coffee. If it's too watery, not as strong as, uh, and flavorful as you want it, use more. Uh, third thing is the temperature. You want to start with about 195 degrees is a good baseline. 195 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 90 or 91 degrees Celsius. Start there. And same, similarly with the other adjustments, if your coffee is too strong and charred tasting, 
reduce your temperature. If you find that it's kind of lacking in overall flavor, increase your temperature until you find that nice happy medium. And I guess um, the fourth thing, so four things, not three things to adjust. The fourth thing to adjust is the amount of time you brew it for, which for a French press is pretty forgivable. Basically, you uh, grind your coffee, you put it in the French press, and then you pour in the water that you've heated up to the temperature uh, we've talked about. And you let it sit for about five minutes. And then what I like to do after about five minutes is stir it around with a spoon, mix it up, and let it sit for another three or so. And then put the lid on the French press and push the plunger down to push all the grinds to the bottom. And then enjoy your coffee. Uh, I hope that was helpful for people who have been asking for um, a tutorial on how to make good coffee. And I will provide links in the description for examples and websites and things like that. So hope uh, that was helpful. We'll get back to the live commentary I recorded earlier where I talk about the village project and why I'm spreading dirt. So here's my idea for the Wasteland Village, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, when I built this prototype up here, I sort of had a little story for each one. And like one was like a bombed out, um, like this was a pre-existing tower before the fall of civilization. And I just sort of simulated it being bombed out by breaking a bunch of blocks. So I had the idea, um, what if I create a village like full of life before the end of the world? with grass and uh, lots of villagers and the houses are all complete um, and then I procedurally end the world <laughs> by like in stages dropping bunches of TNT and I'll um, let uh, zombies in and um, turn all the grass to mycelium and all that kind of stuff so I'm gonna like instead of just creating a wasteland village from the start um, we're going to we're going to experience the apocalypse in stages. And so before I can do that, I needed to get all the sand and sandstone out of here. Um, then I need to spread dirt so we can get some grass going. And then we're going to build a village and then we're going to end the world. The world is going to end before our eyes. And we're going to do it in stages. And then we're going to watch as the villagers and these, this will probably be like short segments in the beginning of each video, something like that. It won't take up the whole video to do these little things. But uh, we're going to watch as they rebuild. <laughs> kind of like, I, I have to admit, I'm inspired by the Walking Dead comic. And um, particularly the, 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 uh, the settlement of Woodbury that they um, rebuilt. And later, well, people watching the TV show, I probably shouldn't say much more because... I'm getting heavily into spoiler territory for people that haven't read the comic. The comic is excellent. The comic really starts to get good right at the point they're in now in the TV show where they get to the prison. And then it just remains awesome. And uh, I've read all the episodes, or all the issues, and um, very good story, very very interesting character developments. But I am, I am um, inspired by, at least in part, by that. And so we'll start off by destroying the village, and then we'll probably start off with maybe one or two villagers who uh, maybe rebuild a house at a time and start to... Um, first thing you're going to have to do is get the zombies out of the house, out of the, uh, the, the area. So they're going to have to fence off um, a section of the village, I guess, and start to rebuild. And so we'll slowly rebuild civilization step by step, or, or we'll watch them do it anyway. And uh, each episode where I do something like this may, may have like a few minutes, a couple minutes of um, like story mode or something where we'll we'll explore the, the progress the uh, the villagers have made, and maybe new villagers will wander in, and maybe they'll have conflicts at some point, like in The Walking Dead, where they'll they'll get into uh, very serious fights over uh, resources and. Uh, food supplies and ammunition and all kinds of stuff. It just sounds like so much fun. Yeah, I'm basically, I basically I want to write my own zombie comic, but it's going to be in Minecraft. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But first, we got to make a village. Let's see. I still have about two more stacks. It's going to have to be bigger than this. I don't know if this area is big enough. 
because we're going to have to build the whole village before we can end the world and then start rebuilding. Once we start rebuilding, we're going to start small and just build a little at a time. But before we can do that, we got to have the whole thing done uh, before the fall. So anyway, that sounds like I, I'm excited to start this project. It sounds like so much fun. Yeah, I hope it. Uh, I hope it works out. If it ends up being stupid for whatever reason, I just uh, I won't spend as much time on it. But I, I think it will be fun. Let's see. We are. I'm almost out of dirt here. Yeah, I think this may be all my dirt. I may have more in my mines, but um, if I do, it's not a whole tremendous amount. And I'll just go ahead and spread the rest of it. Yeah, this is a pretty good area to get started in. Um, we can at least start, uh, I can at least start building the village, and um, as I clear more area out, and as I acquire more dirt to expand the grass, uh, we can we can expand the village, so I can at least start uh, making some visible progress, rather than just endlessly clearing land like I've been doing for feels like forever. I've been sitting on this idea of um, of starting with a vibrant society and then ending the world. I've been sitting on that idea for a while because I've been wanting to do it, but uh, I didn't want to sort of reveal the idea till I was ready to actually do something about it. All right, almost out of dirt. Let's use the rest of the dirt. We'll go get some grass blocks. And then we'll watch the grass grow, which is always exciting. One, two, three. All right. So much progress today. I'm excited. Can't wait to end the world. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. I may have to borrow some TNT from Eth, though. Okay, so it's about to be... It is nighttime. Let's grab the grass block. Uh, let's sleep to make it daylight. Hey, oh. Snoring sound, snoring sound, and a weakness. Um, okay, so um, I think we'll end the video by planting the blocks of grass in the ground. Just plant that one there. There, there, random locations. I guess the desert biome. I've never seen what grass looks like in the desert. Uh, probably because grass is rarely found in the desert. But it's a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a muddy shade of green, which um, won't really fit our pre-fall uh, of society um, segments before we end the world. But it'll certainly fit after we end the world. If we even have any grass left, I I don't know. I was thinking of changing it all to mycelium, but this sickly color may fit. So for the pre-fall of society or civilization sections, I may I may do something like saturating the video to change the color. I may try something like that. We'll see. And I guess since this is under here, I should light this up with torches because it's never gonna get sunlight or grow grass otherwise. Um, I think I mentioned at one point we need to move this, and this is why. But um, we're going to move the villagers into this village eventually. And then uh, to make sure I don't lose them all, I'm going to make, make like a little safe house for villages underground somewhere so that they won't die. Um, we have four more. I need food. Nom, nom, nom. Just put some in the holes here. I could just do it. I mean, I don't really even need to do this much because it only takes one after it gets going. It it really gets going. Um, yeah. So I think um, to begin with, once we get the uh, the real village up and or the initial village up and growing, going, I'll treat it like a subdivision in a town, and it'll have like a uh, probably like a wooden fence around it to keep the monsters out, and then later they'll have to have some more serious barricades. All right, that's all of it. Uh, let's get up here for advantage, and then I'll do like a time lapsey. Oh, hey, oh, little parkour wasteland style, and get up to a good vantage, and uh, then I'll see you next time. St stealing Kurt J. Max tropes and oh, yeah, that's not a very big area, is it?
Yeah, we're going to need um, more. More! We're going to need more. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. See you later. Take it easy. Have a good day. See you later. Bye-bye, everything.